Hi guys, I'm Jesse at StroPro.com and today I'm really excited to show you the brand new X400 Pro TTL Lithium Strobe. That's quite a, a mouthful there, but we've got a lot of features packed into this tiny little strobe and I'm really excited to show you. So let's take it out of the box and see what we've got in the kit here. So right away you're going to notice that this comes with a really nice carrying case. So I'm going to open this up and show you all the parts in here. So inside the case here, right away, we're going to see this little beauty, the 400. And this thing is tiny. I've got the reflector on there, but with that off, you'll see exactly how small that is in my hand. Um, this is really exciting. Never has so much technology been packed into such a small strobe and this is a first on the market and it's really going to change the game here. Now a couple things you're going to get in your kit is you're going to get this reflector which we'll talk more about in a second. The actual light itself. We've got the lithium battery here. The flash tube. It's going to come with the Bowens adapter um, which is going to be important. And we've also got this little pack of screws and an Allen key. Very important, you don't want to lose that. We're going to need that right away here. And then over here we've got our power charging cable and there's a little snack in there. Actually don't eat that, it may kill you. Before we get started, I want to show you something that's a little bit different about this strobe that we need to consider first of all. By default, this is going to come with a different mount here. You'll see these long um, kind of slots. This is the Godox mount. Now, no one uses that mount. The reason why it's used on this strobe is essentially just for the compactness of it. But what we're going to do is take your included Bowens mount, which we've given you in your kit, and we're going to put that onto the actual light. We didn't install it there just in case you do want the other one. Um, we give you the option. Um, and you'll also notice that your reflector has that Godox mount that mounts flush in there. We're going to show you how to take that off so it actually turns into the Bowens mount and we can use it at the same time. So for now what we're going to do, we want the strobe out, we want your adapter, and we want this little bag of screws. So inside here we're going to have an Allen key and then we've got four screws. We actually only need two of these to start with. Um, what we're going to do is take out these two top screws. So one, two, and in the bottom these are already removed here to install this mount. So all we're going to do, your Allen key in there, being careful that that's seated all the way down. You do not want to strip that and you're just going to back these guys all the way out and you can grab it with your finger eventually there. So there's one out and then the other one, they're not in there super tight so you can you can use the uh, steep angle of the Allen wrench if you want. So once you've got these out, what we're going to do is take our adapter and you're going to see on here the release mechanism. So that is going to line up with the release over here. So essentially we're just bringing this in, the two holes are going to line up. We're going to put these two screws back in the top and then the two back in the bottom here. So we'll just fast forward while we do that. Okay guys, we've tightened the screws, being careful not to over tighten them. They just need to be kind of hand tight, the two in the top to in the bottom really quick. Now we have the Bowens mount on there. So you'll see outside here, one, two, three, that's going to fit all of our Bowens mount accessories. Now you might be saying, well, this reflector does not fit on there anymore. That is correct, but this is designed in a way that we can make it fit with that. So take your reflector, first thing you want to do, pop that cover off, it's just friction fit there. That's great for traveling, but always make sure you take that off. And what we need to do is separate this. You're going to see this kind of line in here. This is where this reflector will actually separate. It takes a little bit of force, I'm not going to lie. You're going to just need to get it kind of like a little bit separated. And then it's actually easier if you kind of twist it at the same time. You'll see it's just friction fit in there. 
and now we've exposed the Godox mount. So to use this now, all we need to do is it's going to drop into the actual mount here in the Godox. So we turn and now it's locked in so we can use that 35 degree reflector if you want. And you can also see over here that the Bowens ring has gone over top of the release. So this release activates both the internal and the external release. So it just pulls right out and you just do a quarter turn like that. So again, line that reflector up, pull that quarter turn the other way and you're good to go. Now that's a lot of work just to mess with this reflector honestly. I would recommend like a 7 inch reflector with this but we do include this one just for the portability. If you do need to put this back together, you want the Godox mount on this reflector, you're just going to put the two pieces together. It doesn't really matter where they go. Okay guys, we're ready to install the flash tube now. Um, it's a really simple process. These flash tubes are user replaceable and it's just three pins in here. You want to be careful, don't touch the end of this with your finger. You will leave a grease spot in the frosted part of this, um, but it's really easy. So you're going to see you've got three prongs right here and if we look really closely, there's a little indentation on this one right here. That's going to be the same indentation that's on the bottom of the flash tube. So we're just going to go over to the flash tube, line up those three prongs and then push straight in. I'm not using gloves. This is a protection cover on there so you aren't going to damage the ball but it's never a bad idea to use gloves um, when you're handling any of the glass. So now to install the battery, it's pretty simple. You're going to see four prongs on the battery which go into the uh, receivers on the back of the strobe, making sure that we've got the electrical connections down to the bottom to line up that. So basically all we're doing is we're just going to line those up and once they're lined up, it's just a straight push down. Now that's connected, the strobe is fully assembled, we're ready to put it on the stand. So we're ready to put this on the stand now and you're going to notice this mount, it's a full metal mount on here which is kind of borrowed from its big brother, the X600 Pro. Uh, really firm, it's a frictionless design so you're not going to have the clicks like you had before so you can put this exactly where you want it. So all we're going to do, make sure you back off this thumb screw right here and we're just going to loosen off the handle. That's going to free this. You also see that we have an umbrella reflector hole um, so we can run our umbrella directly through there and that is friction fed. But to mount this onto the spigot on our stand, we're just going to back that off enough, drop it right on top, tighten that down and then on the other side we've got our handle so right now it's just loose and we're just going to tighten that handle down to wherever we want it. Now keep in mind if this handle is in the way, we can pull out or you can basically just push there and it'll move the handle. So if the handle's hitting the Bowens mount or anything up there, just pull it out, move it out of the way and you can reposition it quite easily. A couple other things you're going to notice on this is up top here, underneath the flap on the left, we have a USB-C port that is designed for firmware updates and on the other side is a quarter inch PC sync port. So you're probably not going to need to use that sync port anymore but it is there just as a legacy precaution for you. Underneath the uh, red part here, this does have an optical slave as well so if you did need to fire it remotely um, with another flash you could do that but we're going to get into the controller and where this light really shines in a minute. So to add any modifier onto this, we've got our Bowens ring on there. So any Strobe Pro modifier is going to fit directly on that now. And the way that we do that is we're just going to take the modifier and I have our new uh, Strobe Pro 25 inch rapid beauty dish. This thing sets up in two seconds so check out the video on that. Um, but we've got our Bowens mount here. And those three prongs are just going to match the three prongs on our mount and it's easiest I find if you come from behind and kind of grip the modifier like that. We come over here and we just are basically, actually, we'll go this way to make it a bit easier. We're just going to line up the holes on the modifier. Once it's gone in flush like that, we're just going to give it a quarter turn and it's going to be locked in there. 
Um, after that, you can tighten up all your modifier. Um, but we've got full tilt, full motion now with this beauty dish on and we're ready to get to the shoot. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a deep dive into the menu functions of this strobe, check out all its features. So stay tuned, here we go. Okay guys, um, first thing we want to do is peel off the protection film. There's one there and then there's one up top. I mean you can leave that if you want to, but I would take it off. Um, to turn this on, we've got a bit of a new way. Um, if you push the power button here, you're going to see a little dial come up. What we need to do to activate that is just to turn that. You need to do it within three seconds there. So we turn the wheel, that's going to turn it actually on. The reason for that is so it doesn't turn on in your bag if you were traveling. So we've got a couple different modes here. Let me show you those. Um, first of all, we're in manual mode here, indicated by the M up top. To change the power, all we're going to be doing is just rotating the dial and you can see with the new firmware updates, we're able to adjust the power in one tenth increments, which is nice. So minimum power on this is going to be one one twenty eighth, actually sorry, one two fifty six on this, nine stops and we're going to be able to go all the way up to full power, which is one over one. A nice feature of the X400 Pro as well is that it has auto dump like our other battery operated strobes, which just means as I bring the power down, most lights would have to actually flash to dump that charge out. This does it internally and automatically, so you're always ready to go on your next shot. It's not going to be overexposed. Something you take for granted, but it's there. Uh, you'll also be able to see the flash duration. If that's a, a information that you like to keep track of, it's indicated down on the bottom there. Now to change the mode, we're just going to go up and hit the mode button. Now we're in multi-mode. We won't get too far into this, but what you can do by pushing the set button in the middle of the dial, you're going to have the number of shots and we can set that. Let's say we want 60 shots at 5 hertz. So once that's set in there, we can hit our test button and it's just going to continually fire them off. Um, so you can use that mode if you want. Um, this is not to be confused actually with using like continuous high or continuous low on your camera. That's not what multi means in a strobe. Multi means capturing a single image in the frame and you can kind of like for example a dancer moving across the stage you can get them in that sequence of uh, dance moves going across there by using multi. Uh, if we hit the mode button again we're going to have TTL and you're going to need to have the trigger on for this to be active but we've also got plus or minus uh, three stops so if I hit the set button again if I don't like what the camera is going to set for me, I can dial that exposure in up to three stops and down to minus three stops as well. Um, over here we've got the wireless button, so that's what we're going to use when we connect our controller shortly. Um, when that's enabled, you're going to see channel uh, pop up on the top there. When it's not, you'll see it disappear. And we'll get into that in a second with the group in the channel button. The group in the channel just switches A, B, C, D, E. And then if you hold that for, uh, you actually have to have the wireless on. If we hold that for two seconds, you're going to see the channel button highlight and we can rotate the dial to select whatever channel we want. So we're just going to turn wireless off for a second. Down here we have high speed sync. Now if we're using the trigger, um, this is, on most cameras is going to be enabled automatically so we don't have to worry too much if you go past your camera's shutter sync um, Canon which is typically 1-200, Nikon, 1-250th, um, Sony, Pentax, Panasonic they're around the same range depending on your camera model but if your camera doesn't happen to do that we can activate it manually here as well down in the bottom left we've got our modeling lamp and there's a couple different modes you can see it says off right now if we push that once that's going you're going to see a percentage show up in the corner now we can control the percentage that we want the modeling lamp by pushing the set button actually sorry by holding the modeling lamp button and then rotating the dial 
we can go to full power on that by rotating or minimum power. So if you're trying to shoot uh, kind of a little video with that, um, that's a great setting to, to have it on. Now if we push this again, it's going to go to prop. Now what prop means is depending on the power of the strobe, we're at 1 16th there, um, we can go down, the modeling lamp's going to travel with us. So you can see it uh, kind of dimming out and then when we go to full power, it's getting brighter. Now you will actually see this fan indicator kick on um, and what's causing that is because the modeling lamp is drawing some power, it creates heat, so the fan is going to kick on when you're running that modeling lamp at higher levels. And then our last one again, push it again and we go to off. Uh, over here we have our flash test button, so pushing that is going to test fire it and yes we can turn that beep off. Let me show you how to do that in the custom functions. So our last button here is the menu. This is where all our custom functions are going to be. So if I push that, the first thing you're going to see is the version. That's our firmware version. Um, here at Strobe Pro, we will update you uh, free here at the shop or you can go on our website and download the latest firmware. This should be current for uh, a while here since this is a brand new light. Um, so this color mode. This is what's kind of unique about the X400 Pro and its big brother, the X600 Pro. This allows this strobe to operate in color accuracy mode, which is plus or minus 75 degrees Kelvin. And that's really unheard of in a plug-in strobe, let alone a battery strobe. Most strobes are plus or minus 200, um, is kind of the industry standard, but this thing is color accurate to 75 degrees, which is amazing for those color critical jobs. So to activate that we're going to go into the color, just make sure we're highlighted there, push the set button and we're going to rotate that. Once I push set, you're going to activate the self-destruct button and you have 30 seconds until it explodes. No, actually what it's doing is when we hit that, we need to go back into the menu or just from here we need to hit the test button. Now it's changed its internal settings to be in color accurate mode and when I go out here you'll be able to see if I hit the menu up top here it says color. That's indicated that we're in the color accurate mode. So I don't really need to be in there right now so I'm just going to go back in, click the set, just change it to off and we're okay now. So next one down, um, let's go back to slave. Slave is going to have to do with the optical sensor up top, that thing I showed you before. This will allow the X400 Pro to flash when it sees another strobe. So if you need to use your pop-up flash or another strobe to trigger this, you're going to go to S1. That's going to fire now every time it sees a flash, no matter what it is. You want to be careful with this if you're at a wedding or an event, every flash is going to set this off. When we're using our trigger, we don't need to worry about that. S2, this is a flash pre-delay. So when you're using, uh, for example, red eye reduction on your camera or on your pop-up flash or you're using a TTL speed light to trigger this, it'll ignore the infrared burst that that flash emits and then fire on the next one. So pretty rare these days that you would be using S2, but it is there. So we're going to leave that off. If I go down to uh, model, um, this is the modeling map. We have two options, continuous, which is C-O-N-T there. What that does is when I turn the modeling lamp on, I'm going to just show you out here. When I have that on and I fire the flash, the modeling lamp just stays on all the time. Now if I want that to be a visual indicator to my model, for example, that every time she sees the light turn off, you know, you change your pose or whatever, you can go in there and go to interval. Now when this fires, the modeling lamp is going to dim out and then come back on. So it's just really a visual indication. Some people are used to working with that. So you can turn it on or off. We don't need the modeling lamp on right now. Go back into the menu. 
So after that, we have standby mode, which you can set to go to sleep whenever you want from as soon as 30 minutes all the way up to 120 minutes, or you can just have standby off. So that's if you're at an event center or something, you've got it up on a boom somewhere and you're not using it right away, you don't want it to go to sleep and turn off, then just make sure you go to the off there. From there, we have the light. This is the backlight here. So we have 15 seconds off or on for this video. Obviously, we have it on, so it'll just continuously stay on. I wouldn't recommend keeping that on. It's just going to drain the battery a little bit faster. So if you're just normal shooting, just set it to the 15 seconds and then it'll turn off. Delay, we have a flash pre-delay, so it's a triggering delay. You can set to infinite number of seconds or milliseconds there. If you're trying to time up other triggers or anything, you can do that. Um, these next two I'm going to go over in another video, but essentially you can use this flash with other ones for masking. So you can use it with our X400 or X600 uh, or our X uh, Pro series here as well. And essentially what it does, it sequences flashes to create silhouettes for easy clipping in Photoshop. So check out the, the video on that if you want to go through there. Um, that has to do with the units and the masking as well. So you'll see the alt units here as well. LCD just adjusts the brightness uh, of it. So we can go plus three or minus three. It doesn't make a huge difference to be honest. Um, so I would just leave it set at zero. ID, what we can do with this flash is we can turn this on and we can expand the ID, which is the channels available between the X400 here and the triggering. So you can, if 32 channels isn't enough for you, you can go to over a thousand channels. So you can turn that on, but I highly doubt you would be in that situation. So let's turn that off again. Here's the beep, so that beep that you hear when we're flashing, if that's annoying you, just go to off here. Now when it fires, it will not make the beep. And this thing recycles so quickly that you don't really need the beep on. It used to be with older flashes, you know, you're waiting for them to recharge. This thing will dump 400 uh, watts in a second, so you really don't need the beep on anymore. And then last one, if you want to reset everything that you did, just click reset and this is going to reset to your defaults. Again, to get out of the menu, we just hit menu there and we're out. So the last thing I want to talk about, which we didn't go over here, is connecting this to your controller. So to prepare to do that, what we need to do is set a group and a channel for this light. So over here, now you can see it by default, I turned off the LCD. Um, so I want to go back to light here so this light just stays on all the time for me. But back in our channel and group, that's this button. We want to make sure our wireless is enabled now because we're going to connect the controller. So push the wireless, we're going to see channel pop up there. And if I want to change that channel again, I'm just going to hold the channel button rotate this to whatever I want. For now, um, I'm just going to leave it on one, but you can go all the way up to 32 channels. So knock yourself out, whatever one you want to pick there, it doesn't matter. Occasionally you could get interference if you're in a building with a lot of Wi-Fi signals and that, so that's um, a time you might want to consider changing that channel. Or if you're at an event and there's other strobe pro shooters there, they might be on channel one, which would control your light as well. So just change that to something else. And then our groups. So right now we're on A indicated over here. Go to B, C, D, whatever you want. So just be aware, whatever channel you pick here, your controller is gonna control that. So if we have another X Pro, X400 Pro, and we set it to A as well, both of those are gonna adjust at the same time. So channel's always gonna stay consistent, but the group is gonna change. So if we wanna have the other light change independently, we would set the other one to B, for example, and now we have independent control. From there, that's really all that we have to do. All those settings are actually saved in there, so when we power off and come back on, 
We don't have to redo anything at all. It's going to be locked into there and we're ready to start shooting. So now we're going to move on to how to connect the controller and show you that real quick. So we've got the XT Pro controller set up, which is the controller that I'd recommend for this flash. Um, it gives you all the advanced features of this, and it's really just a shame if you're not using the controller with this flash because you're not going to have um, like your high speed sync and you're not going to have TTL and all the advanced functions. So pick up this controller, it's really affordable. Uh, it's available for basically every brand now, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, Olympus, and Pentax. So we've got you covered. You only need one controller as well. One controller will work with all of our lights. So all of our strobes, all of our speed lights, and uh, it's a really awesome way to be able to control these remotely. So what I need to do when I turn this guy on here, um, first of all, I'm gonna, just gonna set that light to continually stay on. So if I go, oops, if I go into my menu here, go down to light like we did. Um, actually, I've already got it set on, so we'll just leave it to on. Now we've got a couple of different things that we need to do here. So up in the top left there, we've got the channel. Um, so that's showing one and we need it to match our strobe over there, which is also one. So I can do that if it was a different channel, I can just hold the zoom in the channel button hold that down, it's going to highlight it, and now I can select whatever channel I want. So we're going to use channel 1 there. Now I'm zoomed in here, but the nice thing about this controller is we can see all of the different groups indicated here. So I can go in and I can change them if I want to control group C and I want a uh, different mode, I can go TTL, I can go manual. Um, I can also go in and do a uh, continuous multi-burst as well. But we're concerned with A up here, so I'm going to indicate A. From there, all I need to do in manual mode, again, I selected the mode there. I can go manual, off, TTL. But when I'm in manual, all I'm doing now is just going to rotate the controller, and you're going to see over on the actual flash, the power is changing as I do that. Now, Watch what happens. We're going to see, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here, 1128, and then I go to 1256. If you've got this brand new, by default, 1256 will not be enabled. So we need to go into the menu here. So I'm just going to hit menu and go up to um, the distance, no, not the distance. Uh, where are we here? The step. So what step is doing? We've got 1128, 1256, 128.01. What does all this stuff mean? Simply 1128, if you're using this controller with only speed lights, they only go down to 128. But because you've got the X400 Pro here, which is the top of the line, it goes down another stop, all the way down to nine stops, which is 1256. So if we go to 1256, that's going to be able to adjust our power all the way down in one third increments. If I want to do one tenth increments, I'm going to go down to 1256 and it's going to show 0 0.1. Now I can back out of there and I'm able to go and one tenth increments all the way down to 1256. So if you're ever wondering why you can't go any lower, that's the reason why. Now, if I want to zoom in um, closer to that group, I can just hit the plus button here and it's going to show me my power setting. It's a plus uh, minus, or sorry, it's a plus a little magnifying glass there and zoom out and then we have full control over here. One other thing you might want to be able to control is the modeling lamp. So if I push the mod here, it's going to turn the modeling lamp of the strobe on. You do not have like uh, individual control like you do in the actual menu of the X400 Pro. So it's just going to turn on whatever you have set into the actual flash. So we turn that off again. Um, one thing that this does have is a TCM function. And if you look at our controller video, we get into detail about that 
Um, and what the TCM function allows you to do is take a TTL um, flash and convert it to a manual power setting. So that can be useful when you've got multiple X400 Pro strobes going off and you want just a baseline to kind of start out. Uh, over here we have the sync button which enables high speed sync which you saw come up on the top there. Um, a lot of times, most cameras, that's going to be done automatically. Just make sure it's enabled in your flash control in your camera menu. Um, from there, again, with uh, the different modes in here, I can go back, I'm going to go back into A. I'm going to hit the mode button, go to off, so that won't flash. In TTL, uh, if we don't want, like what the camera's setting, just hit the set button and we can adjust the exposure compensation plus or minus uh, three stops there. So that can be useful if you are shooting TTL. And then of course we've got the test button here which will test fire the flash and you can be sure that it's working. One thing I want to show you guys, if you happen to be using this controller this close to the flash, what can happen sometimes is you'll get some interference. There's really not very many reasons why you would use the, the controller this close to the flash, but if you happen to be doing that, what you need to do, go into the menu again, I'm oh, sorry, menu down here, and we're gonna go to the distance setting. So in distance here, we have one to 100 meters, and then we have zero to 30. So in close range, if you're getting any interference, you are missing any shots or something, it's because you're too close, enable the zero to 30 there and you'll be fine. So we can back back out then, uh, and we're good to go. I wanna to mention to you guys, we get this question all the time, is when people go to their actual flash and say they adjust the power, they walk over to the flash, adjust the power to 164th, they go back to their controller and they focus their camera and what happens is they fire it and they don't realize that the flash just went back to what the controller says. So keep in mind the controller when it's in use will always override whatever you do manually to the power settings on, on the actual flash, even the mode. So if I go over to the uh, mode here, I want to go to TTL for example, but I'm over in manual and I focus the camera, it's going to go back to manual mode because that's what I have set on the actual controller. So just something to keep in mind, controller is always in charge of the flash. So in this hand I've got the X600 Pro, here's the X400 Pro. Uh, you can see the size comparison, obviously the 400 is quite a bit smaller there. Uh, you'll see that the flash tube is noticeably smaller, the mount, but basically it's just a miniature version of this 600. It's got all the same features, it's got the plus or minus uh, 75 degree color variance. Uh, this thing recycles extremely fast, uh, 400 watts at one second or less, which is crazy. It's got the nine stops power range. Um, this battery will last 390 full power shots. Uh, which is a little bit more than the 600 actually. It takes only about two and a half hours to charge that up. So this thing is really versatile. If you pick up the Stro Pro Traveler kit bag, it's a really nice bag. You can get four of these in there easily um, and still have room for all your controllers and stuff as well. Really good location, like we're really excited about it. Never so much technology being packed in such a small package here. Um, and we're excited to see what you guys can do with it. So check the X400 Pro out at Stro Pro. And from Stro Pro, I'm Jesse. We'll see you next time.